Drop it like it's hot. Drop it like it's hot. Call me Cardi B. I run this shit like Cardi. Oh, 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 oh my God. What's good, Angie? My name's Alex Purdy. I'm from Bethesda, Maryland. I'm an artist, I make music, I produce beats. What's good is my vacation. Yes. Out here in Porto Valarte. And I'm pretty sure I'm not pronouncing that correctly. But that anyhow, if you ever are in Mexico, you've got to come and check it out. And they always give away free tequila. That's Ooh! what's good. Free tequila? Girl, you know mm. that is my middle name right there. Some good energy kicking off the show, kicking off this Monday. Yeah. Um, or whatever day you're actually listening to this podcast because we know that you're doing it on your own time mm -hmm. when it's convenient to you. Um, that's what I've realized about podcasts. That it's kind of like a passive medium, right? <laughs> Everybody's like, yeah, I, I really got to listen to this podcast. But then you don't really turn it on until you need some some like white noise, something yeah, in the background. To stimulate your brain. While you're doing something else. Like for me, it's always when I'm picking up... Um, you know, the kids' playroom or doing their laundry. Right. And I have it in the background. And I feel like I'm actually getting something done and, you know, entertaining myself as well. So whatever you're doing, uh, we're just glad that you're listening or yes. watching. And we are glad to have you here for another day. It was a big, big week for us. Congratulations to our family friend, Bia. Yes. And Nathan. They got married. Yes. Over the weekend, we were joining them for their holy matrimony. <laughs> And my kids were actually in the wedding, all three of them. Oh, my God. This is goals right here. So I was kind of prepared for total meltdown, which we were melting because it was outside. Bob kind of dropped the rings, but to his credit, the top was very, very loosey-goosey. So, you know, and he recovered well. Yes, Adora was a pro. Oh, my God. Flawless. Beautiful. Yes. She's growing up so I fast. Know, Angie? I know. She's wearing chokers. Who is this girl? Uh. <laughs> I don't know, but she uh, she looked gorgeous, and I loved how she went back and grabbed Ren's hand. I know, such a good when, big sis. Um, when Ren was doing circles, I had no idea what she was doing. She was carrying the sign. She just knew that everybody obviously was looking at her. Um, I will say towards the end, it was as if Ren had been here before. Because she not only went to the front of the line and is like staring at the groom like she's about to marry him. Right. But she waited for the music to stop. Then, with passion, throws that sign down, bam, <laughs> and then breaks out in applause. So Yay, Ren! She was there for it. So, Bia and Nathan, uh, we wish you many, many good years yes. of luck and love. I won't say that marriage will ruin your life. It might. <laughs> I'm like 11 years in, but I'm still standing. I cannot. Right? So, um, <laughs> it'll be fine. It'll it be will. fine. It'll it all be worth it. So uh, Take your time with the kids, though, because, man... Yeah. Watching Angie with three is like a workout I mean, in itself. Oh once you gosh. pop them out, you can't put them back. Oh, no! Put me back in! Put me back in! Please, buddy, let go of my head and put me back inside! We went to see that show. I love... Is it Cirque du Soleil? I can't Yeah, say. Cirque, Cirque du Soleil. Cirque du Soleil. Oui, yeah. oui, I don't know. Is it French or whatever? I can never pronounce it. Every time I have to say that in the teleprompter when they're like, Cirque du Soleil is in town, I always try to say it really quickly because I'm like, I don't know if I'm saying this. It's just like Madame Tussauds, like two sides. Like, <laughs> Yo, you missed Why can't you just call it a wax music? Museum. Why can't you say it's just an acrobat circus? No, Cirque du Soleil. So we went to Cirque du Soleil, and uh, every year yes. they always do a theme. Right. And I love taking the kids there. Um, last year, they I don't know what the theme was. All I know is they had a bunch of contortionists. And then for the next six, seven months, my kids want to become contortionists. Your kid wants to be a lawyer. One wants to be an astronaut. Maybe a YouTube star? No. They were looking up YouTube videos on how to increase their flexibility and sit on their head. I could not. So after that experience, I was like, maybe, maybe we should not go back this year. But, um, but of course, I, I get sold by all the advertising, and it looks like a spectacular. And it's show. an easy play date with the moms. Easy play date, and it's close by. And they they do the show nationwide. I mean, there's different places that you can go see it. I think they're in Atlanta next. Um, and it was called Volta. I have no idea what that means. Me neither. When you texted me that Sunday morning, I was waking up from day partying the day before and was like, you're going to Volta? I thought you were going to Volvo to get a new car. <laughs> 
<laughs> nope, nope. Volta and the, this year, I what I do like, and I did a little research, is it was based off this one character named Waz. And, okay. and that's really what's so beautiful about these performances is that they do have a story to tell. And so I sent the story to both the moms that were joining me so that they kind of had an idea so they could explain it to their kids. And I explained to Bob, you know, this is a kid um, who has blue hair as or has blue feathers as hair and he is reflecting he is looking back at old memories of growing up different and truly it's a story about transformation mm -hmm. and being judged by others and coming into one's own skin and just having self-acceptance so it does have a beautiful story in the end this one guy he created it's called the acro lamp i love lamp He's swinging on a lamp. And of course they had, you know, the BMX bikes, then mm -hmm. they had the people jumping on the big ass trampolines. Right. And um and doing and all crazy flips Lots and of tricks. music, um, a violinist, a beautiful singer. And then they had the comedic relief. They have like kind of what their version of clowns are, and they do these little skits. And the kids were they were dying laughing. Like I mean, <laughs> to watch Bob like be silent for almost two hours and that's unbelievable. That's a miracle. That's a that's a miracle. It's a feat. The bread babe hey, back in the house. That's right. Looking good. Did you miss me? I did. Missed you a lot. I missed you, you too. Know, the room felt a little empty, but sisters were happy they to see it. They held it down. They, they were did. so cute on the show. They did a great job. Shout out to you, Trey. Trisha and Jenny, my girls. And girl, you needed this vacation. Did I need it or what? I mean, look at these videos right here. I mean, I don't even know how to. I, I, I'm acting like I haven't had a vacation in five years with all the turn up that was happening for real. I can't watch this video <laughs> without putting some shades summer, on. Summer, summer, summer time. <laughs> what the hell are you doing here on the side of the pool? Is this a strip club or is this a resort? Luckily, I'm not showing the videos of my mom, too, who was getting lit. Oh, glow. <laughs> No, this is a 28-year tradition. We've been doing this ever since I was little. My dad's from Savannah, Georgia. And we go down to Hilton Head, which is not far from where Angie mm -hmm. vacays every mm -hmm. year. Get a big house with my cousins and turn up. Now we're all 21 and up. Yeah. And even the ones that aren't 21 and up, you know, they act like it because they yeah, got yeah, to go yeah. to college. But it was lit. And you guys are setting a great example for them. <laughs> a big week, uh... We had a little golf to golf talk. Yeah, that's what you. In Your case you missed it, came to town. I in saw. case you missed it. Oh my god! I did try to get her to go on the record that we're related, <laughs> and she was not having it. A one on one with her that aired on uh, Fox Five. What are your eyes set on? Um, my next step is doing as best as well as I can in this tournament. I also talked to her about what did your parents do differently in this age where everyone wants their kid to be a champ. And she said, you know, my parents. They were always like, go out there and have fun. Mm -hmm. But they also gave me parameters. So if I was having too much fun, they would just move me right back. But if she said, if I wanted to give up tennis today, they would be fine with that because that's my decision and I'm not playing for them. That's real. And I think that that is really, you know, because I've battled this a little, you know. With, yeah, you're with competitive, we know. With I'm the like, door and golf, for you starters. won't play Carnegie Hall. You're Korean. <laughs> I hate piano. <laughs> you can't. It's in your blood. We want to keep the inspiration going. And if there's one type of person I love, it is a disruptor. And my next guest is a big disruptor. Susan Tynan, who is the CEO and founder of Framebridge, joining us in studio. Thank you so much for coming. Thanks, Angie. I want to begin with um, just the whole idea behind Framebridge because I was just at a birthday party this past weekend and one of my mom friends had these gorgeous portraits that were hand-drawn in Paris. And I was like, oh my gosh. I was like, those are beautiful. Uh, did that cost you a gazillion dollars? And she was like, no, no. And she's like, but then when I got back here, you know, the framing, she was like, oh, and she almost passed out. And I was like, yes, yes, this is a problem, a huge one. And you, you noticed that as a mother yourself yep. and you decided to take a little action. So tell me the backstory right. on that. Yeah. So I had four national parks posters I'd collected over the years and I thought, oh, they'd be a fun thing to hang on the wall. And I went to a frame store and had the worst experience. It was really intimidating. And I wound up paying $400 each to have them framed. What prompted you to actually take action and try to fix this problem and be a disruptor in what, at the time in 2014 when this happened, uh, was a $4 billion industry? Yeah. So the good and the bad of my personality, I think, is I just don't let things drop. And so I just became sort of obsessed. And I asked everyone socially, 
work every have you yeah. ever had something framed and everybody had this horror story about how much it cost but then when you ask the next question what did you frame nicest things and mm-hmm. so i was like no this is something wonderful people would do it more often it just is being delivered in this really mm-hmm. crappy way how did you go from just this idea as a frustrated mother to making this multi-million dollar business with hundreds of employees yeah so i am um i had more of a consumer technology background so i started really thinking of like what would the website look like what would the experience look like how would we make the pricing clear i just started mocking up all of that type of thing uh-huh. at the same time i went around asking people truly that was part of the process was continuing to talk to hundreds of people to make sure this wasn't just my idea and and that other people actually wanted this to exist um and then around the same time i actually started talking to investors of course many of whom thought i was a little crazy like is this Mm. actually a problem does anyone really care by offering it for less money more people would frame and so that was the dream right that people Mm. would frame more stuff by the way i see a very cute kids art that yes that needs framing oh no (laughs) (laughs) i'm being frame shamed is that what we call it no it's not true it's not true i actually yeah your stop 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 letter that uh-huh. you talked about your daughter. Oh, yes, yes. I was like, oh my gosh, that is like quintessential frame bridge. That must be frame bridge. How do we go about getting these pictures and these memories off of our devices and into our lives? I think a lot of us don't do anything because just thinking about it is overwhelming. Start with things that make you happy. Like truly, our reason for being is people should surround themselves with highlights of their life. So it doesn't, you know, it doesn't have to be. Um, Art that someone else thinks is worth something. It uh-huh. has to be something that truly made you happy or was particularly special, or you just want to like capture a moment in time. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, so, not necessarily like those posed pictures, or not necessarily even a picture. It could be an item, right? Yeah, absolutely. And so, truly, it's like what captured the summer for you. Like there was a moment, or an evening out, or a day at the beach, and just start with those things. Our website and our app make it really easy for you mm-hmm. um, to visualize what your stuff looks like. Frame. Um, if you have physical things like that letter, we send you packaging to send us your art, all included in the price. We've made it easier in D.C. We opened up two stores. We made it so like you come in with your piece of art and you put it on the table and the table has size dimensions. It'll tell you exactly how much it'll cost. Is there really a proven benefit of doing something like this? It's interesting. I talked to this NYU professor who was studying like what is the difference between the photos that people post online and the ones they bring into their life and it's interesting right because it's a different purpose there's one like you want to show everybody what you're doing and then there's like the no really what do I treasure and so we have the most awesome business and that we get to see what people truly treasure yeah. um I know this would mean something to you like you would not believe how much people frame pets like mm-hmm. amazing pets kids vacations like Mm -hmm. no offense to work people don't frame that much about (laughs) (laughs) I can see that (laughs) yeah that belongs in the storage room (laughs) sorry no I'm just kidding although achievements Um, we do like that's a fun thing too we do see like we get to share and people's like we're like yeah like you should that Iron Man you should frame something from it you have anything crazy like underwear Oh, no, I'm just kidding. Truly, like literally, it's like there's like a truth. I have a truth serum problem, oh, which gosh. is like every time I like looking anyone in PR in our company is like, please don't tell that story. But we did once frame an umbilical Sorry. cord, an umbilical cord. I mean, go oh, figure. You framed an umbilical cord? We did. We did. And I have to stop talking about it. But on a, on a less <laughs> gross note, we framed a hard pretzel, which oh, interesting. Um, like a shared joke between yeah. friends. Oh, I love that. We also see exactly what's happening in culture, right? Mm-hmm. So a couple of weeks ago, I was like, oh, how much women's soccer stuff are we going to frame? Which, of course, that's exactly what came through mm-hmm. um, in the next week. And then we just framed all this Apollo 11 stuff. And so like, yes, I couldn't I believe how many people have, you know, 50-year-old newspapers, but they do. No way. <gasps> that's great. Mm -hmm. And so it's very cool that we get to sort of um, just be a part of whatever is happening across the country. Yeah, so there really is this cultural Uh, connection. What is the best advice you ever received? You may not be able to figure it all out today, but you just have to keep moving forward. And it really is like in, in that case, if you can't figure it out today, you just have to sort of like set your sights farther out. And like, am I going toward where I want to be going? Yeah, ultimately I am. So today's setback is just today's setback. Um, and I think when you're trying to juggle a lot, there will always be some. 
Yeah, I mean, it never goes according to plan, right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Just when you start to gain oh that momentum, gosh. it's like Monday. Oh, it's Monday. I'm ready. Take out the day. And then you get to work and it's like, oh my gosh, something is throwing a curveball thrown your way right when you walk in the door. But you're saying you got to look past that. You got to look yeah. past the curveball um, and not be taken down by it. I love that. Uh, and that's what separates people, right? That's what yeah. I always think. I'm like, the harder it is, sort of the less likely someone else is going to do this. Right? Like, no one else has it enough to keep it's, going. It's a little lonely on the extra mile, they say. <laughs> a little lonely. I love it. We've all had setbacks. Mm-hmm. And I w- I'm also interested in knowing what your biggest regret is. Yeah. So I think that times I did not trust my own instincts. I Interestingly, times I... I probably listened to too much external feedback, whether it was from, you know, I, a lot of smart people surrounding me, investors or team, or, but it wasn't core to what we were building or what we stood for. Um, I regret those times. What's your next goal, whether it's in business or in life? I'd love to see stores throughout the country. I'd love for us just to be the way people celebrate things. It's exciting to watch. And I have a few things I need for him, so I got to talk well, to you I'm afterwards. I'm looking around the studio. I like. I'm going to take go. some stuff with me. Yeah, but you need to come to my house. <laughs> Susan, it was such a delight to have you in studio. You're an inspiration as a mom and as a business leader and as a woman. So, All right, doing thank it. Thank you. Thanks, thank Angie. You. you too. I appreciate it. Thanks again to Susan Tynan for joining us in studio. Uh, a lot of great takeaways there, which leads us into awakening. Y'all know that my life is complete chaos. It is a hot mess. I'm now doing three shows. I'm trying to still raise three children or at least keep them alive. I've got a dog that's eating everything under the sun. And I'm still trying to um, stay married. Stay married. Yeah, let's add that to the list. And I also want to create a home out of my house. Okay, I'm a creative person. We know this. It comes down to time. It comes down to time. So when I discovered Deco Crated, and I'm just telling you, like when this arrived, it was an awakening. This is like a big box with a bunch of little boxes inside with things that all go together. Yes. That can actually help you just update the house in a whim. Brittany, you saw it and you were like, oh my gosh, so cute. So cute. First of all, look at this sign right here. Recipe for fun. What does it say, Ange? A dash of good vibes, a glass of bubbly, a handful of besties, one epic playlist to blend well with endless nights. All men. And then turn it around, rise and grind, which is one of my favorite sayings ever. This little picture frame where Angie and I will put a photo in here soon. <laughs> you love that. That is so cute. Oh I gosh. love this. This looks like, I mean, you could hang your coats. Hello. Your keys. You know what I mean? We're always Hello. losing keys. So cute. It looks Ooh. like a lantern. Yep. Put a candle in there. That's perfect for outside. merchandise. <laughs> Every summer has a story. Yes. That's and cute. it's called the Oh My Goff Show. Started hey, hey. off in 2019. Yes, June that's 21st. A story. That's the story of our life and your life. They gave us an apron with um, some dining napkins as well. They actually spotlight artists. Mm. You know, artists, up and coming artists. And they give them a shot at designing um, their products. And this was done by one of our favorites. Yeah. Jasmine Estrada of yes, Jazz, Jazz It's one thing to get the stuff, but then you're like, how do I put it together? And so they actually have resources online. And then they have these little lookbooks that show you how you can replicate it. Swag it out. And that's how what I'm all about. Stick it up. <laughs> This is what Adora loved. It, it's not in this box because it's still at home um, because Adora's been playing with it, but it's the little tic-tac-toe game, which is perfect oh, yeah. for summer. And then it has the board for the game as part of the bag, so you just turn it over. That is and, cute. And so her and Chin playing here, so they're enjoying it as well. One more thing that woke us up this weekend. Oh, yeah, little bonus. Turning Play. 50. <laughs> That's a workout right there, girl. Lean when I'm back. 50? And lean back. And lean back. I Is mean, gonna be me at 50? Bel Air, just make sure you lace us with that good good, okay? At the party for sure. <laughs> so we I can know. be banging our heads Wait. like that at the end of the night. I am so dizzy. I don't know how she does this. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
Don't tell dad I let you have a bottle today. It's gonna be a secret, right? We will not tell anyone, I promise. I mean, milk is just better in a bottle, right? <laughs>